So as far as we know, standing up here with the lights in our eyes, we have 11,000 people in this crowd. 11,000 relatively comatose post-lunch crowd. Welcome. You guys ready for some excitement? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm Dave Nicholson. I'm a host and analyst and also CTO of uh, Silicon Angle Media. Uh, I'm also adjunct faculty at the Wharton School's uh, CTO and digital transformation programs. Uh, I'm going to be doing my best to moderate and keep up with our distinguished panel of experts today. Uh, the subject at hand, first of all, let me, uh, let me thank the OCP Networking Project for making this possible, this discussion. Uh, we are going to be discussing this question of the case that can or can't be made for standardization of congestion control for Rocky. Um, I am particularly proud to be part of this because in the meta sort of way, when you think about it, uh, Rocky is this nested acronym within an acronym. I love when I explain to people that the R in Rocky actually stands for RDMA, and then I wait for them to ask me, well, what does that stand for? Hopefully we have at least a few people here that already know what RDMA stands for, because we don't have a ton of time for, uh, for bringing people up to speed. Um, but the net is, there's this outstanding question as we move into the world of increasing demands for um, uh, high performance computing, uh, the idea that maybe high performance computing can't live on an island like it used to be able to, maybe there are benefits to embracing ethernet and Rocky to bring in general compute stuff with everything that's high performance in the world of AI, ML, VR, AR, all the, all the two letter acronyms that go along with the world today. Um, so we're gonna be discussing that in depth. Uh, this is intended to, uh, you know, sort of the flow is that our experts will give their brief thoughts on the subject um, as sort of grist for the meal, for the, for the mill, for the conversation that we hope to have moving forward. So your individual jobs, pay attention to what we talk about at first, feel obligated to come up with a cogent question on the subject or thought because we'd love to spend the majority of this session in an interactive dialogue. I've got plenty of pre-canned questions that I can focus on, but it's always more interesting to get audience participation, especially with four distinguished guests with different perspectives. So with that, let me introduce our distinguished panel. I'm not distinguished, but I am at the top of the list. Um, starting with Idan Burstein from NVIDIA. Idan is a principal architect leading NVIDIA's DPU architecture. Um, he has also ha had a history of leading industry standards for InfiniBand, NVMe, PCIe, et cetera. And he's the chair of the Invi InfiniBand Link Working Group, otherwise known as LWG. Immediately to the left, Wei Len Hong from Cisco. He's a distinguished engineer a prolific inventor, which means I think we'll see you on Shark Tank soon. Prolific enough for Shark Tank, no? Um, uh, in, uh, in the areas of networking in silicon, uh, 25 plus years of networking in silicon experience. Um, Karen Schramm joins us from Broadcom, uh, VP of Engineering, architect for Broadcom's NIC products, 30 plus years of networking and silicon development experience. Um, you know, if we added up the years of experience, I think we're over 100 on the stage for sure. Um, and then finally, uh, Arvind Srinivasan from Meta. Uh, he's a networking and system sil silicon architect with more than 25 years of experience. He's a senior system architect in Meta's network infrastructure team, working on solving the next generation of AI networking problems. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Idan to give us his perspective, a little, uh, little primer for the room, Idan. Thanks. Um, yeah, so, so um, I'm here to speak a bit about uh, congestion control for accelerated transport. So, um, by the way, I don't see anyone. It's like, we're all... <laughs> um, so, so, so um, this, this is... The, the congestion control for accelerated transport is like a greenfield for innovation. Um, 
lately. So if you uh, look at, uh, for example, SIGCOM, uh, which is an important networking uh, conference, academic conference, you would see that almost every year um, a major company, um, a data center company like uh, Alibaba or Google um, or Microsoft, uh, are publishing papers about uh, how to uh, do congestion control for accelerated transports. Um, so, um, you, so, so, and, and the solutions have, uh, are different and are using different uh, primitives, different algorithms, um, um, different mechanisms in the transport. Um, so, for example, um, um, uh, uh, Timely, which is, which is a, um, a, an RTT-based uh, congestion control algorithm that measures the RTT in the network in order to decide uh, on, the, uh, on the ingestion rate um, uh, to the network, uh, DCQCN, which is using uh, ECN as a standard uh, notification from the network into the adapter in order to make decisions about, about the rate uh, of the tr transmission. Um, lately, a HPCC algorithm was published, which is incorporating uh, window-based congestion control with, um, with uh, telemetry from, uh, from the switches um, that can, uh, can improve the ability of, uh, of, the congestion, uh, of the congestion algorithm to make decisions about how to uh, increase or decrease the rate uh, faster uh, because of the more accurate uh, information coming from the switches. Um, uh, HOMA, which is, was publishing a credit-based congestion control mechanism, which basically schedules a packet transmission uh, um, uh, according to um, resources that are, that are existing in the network for this packet uh, to traverse uh, up front. Um, and also RLCC, which is a paper that was published uh, last year uh, about uh, uh, reinforcement learning a congestion control algorithm, which is using most of the primitives on top, um, just uh, uh, not by crafting an algorithm uh, mathematically, rather than uh, uh, um, uh, 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 providing a reinforcement learning engine to make decisions about congestion control. So this field is, 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 is embedding a lot of innovation, um, and nevertheless, it needs to exist in a data center um, where everything needs to interoperate with everything, right? Um, and there are plurality of solutions of how to run those transport, uh, um, those transport ac accelerators. Um, and all of these need to interoperate and work well, right? Uh, software implementations, hardware implementations, hardware implementations of different companies. Um, and, 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 um, and, and this is a major challenge that the Rocky ecosystem is dealing with right now. Uh, because from one end, you want to enable this space, right? You want to enable uh, companies to come up every year with their own congestion control algorithm, with their own way of integrating it into the data center. Uh, but from the other end, you want to allow interoperability. Um, can we move yep. to the next slide? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so, so um, I would like to speak about my view of how, uh, what is the standardization role uh, uh, in congestion control in ac for accelerated transport. Um, so I think uh, like we want to allow interoperability um, in between devices, in between implementations. Um, uh, we want to enable uh, primitives uh, that are needed for, for, uh, for congestion control, for example, um, uh, primitives for measuring the round trip time in the network, primitives for collecting telemetry, uh, primitives for controlling the transmission rate or controlling the transmission window. Um, we want to also have um, a, to, to, to have well-aligned uh, APIs and programming model for these primitives uh, so, so people can uh, create software stacks that are interoperable between, between devices. Um, but we want to also enable innovation on the algorithmic uh, space. Um, so we should like try to find the, 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 the right line um, in between um, for, for this standardization. And, it, and I, think, I think that um, this can bring us into a point where it's easy for developers uh, to make transitions in their own data centers, but it's not um, that you take off the shelf uh, network adapters 
uh, for uh, network adapters and they just interoperate with congestion control algorithms. You need to make it work by integrating your knowledge and your algorithms, but the primitives uh, are uh, interoperating. So um, uh, the, the primitives uh, that I speak about, for example, are for example, how to probe the network, how to manage credits, um, how to control uh, rates and control windows, uh, how to program the devices. Um, and there is work that we are doing today in the InfiniBand uh, Link Working Group um, on uh, that we, like uh, part of it was already done and work that we are doing. Um, for example, we, are, we have standardized the Rocky V2 a congestion notification packet, which is basically a primitive that allows the uh, switches to mark uh, ECN and uh, relay back um, uh, relay back to the sending node um, uh, the information of, of whether there is congestion or not in order to control the rate. Um, there is an ongoing work right now in IBTA to define uh, the Rocky congestion control uh, probing, which is the ability to measure round trips. Um, and there is also a lot of work done in IETF right now on defining telemetry protocols um, in order to, that would interoperate with these uh, transport, uh, transport uh, uh, implementations in order to uh, have more fine-grained information about what's happening in the network. Excellent start. Waylon. Yes, thanks. Um, so the first natural question that um, one would pose is whether there's a market need. Um, there's been new trends, um, distributed training for AI ML workloads that's been uh, stressing the networks. Uh, uses RDMA as an underlying technology. And RDMA has, uh, with, with RDMA for this application, there's certain expectations uh, for the network behavior. Primarily high performance with efficient utilization and low flow completion times. Consistency, reliability through fast and stable algorithms. If you take a step back and think about these requirements, um, perhaps the, a very natural solution might be that fully scheduled Ethernet. Um, and, but if you want to even uh, use what you have today, uh, which is traditional Ethernet, you could still tune your network, tune your application, uh, Go, f go for uh, higher, higher link bandwidths, uh, pay, pay more cost, and uh, still try to uh, chug along with your traditional Ethernet. And then there's st also the advanced congestion control. Idan actually mentioned quite a bit of it. I summarized into traditional you know, ECN that's been around for a while that's been update upgraded, um, delay-based round trip time, and various forms of uh, telemetry-assisted uh, uh, congestion control algorithms. And what could be next? I think Idan actually talked about there's, you know, every year there's there are new papers coming out. Another consideration is what, what would it take? In an ideal world, standards would be widely, imp widely implemented and widely available. They'd be widely adopted, and that's how you get a really wide impact. They'd also be highly interoperable over time. And desirable uh, features would be simple mechanics, um, extensibility, uh, perhaps via frameworks, and application profiles, perhaps, uh, for certain types of workloads. Could this be pillow tracks like what it is uh, today? Um, majority outside of standards, a little bit in standards today, across standards, or maybe there's a real convergence that there's one standard that will uh, solve it, solve have have the right framework to solve uh, the majority of needs for everybody. Thanks, Wayland. Karen. All right. So, uh, if you've tried to deploy Rocky, um, the the primary use case is for machine learning, HPC AI. There's also quite a bit of interest in storage. We've talked about it in earlier talks today. And like, why Rocky? Well, you're going to get really low latency, and you're going to get high bandwidth. But the R, RDMA, is, uh, was defined uh, originally for InfiniBand, which is a reliable transport. And as you try to run RDMA over Ethernet, you get into quite a few challenges, and the biggest one is congestion control. 
Um, the algorithms tend to have large bursts of traffic, lots of large flows. It's very different pattern than you'd see in traditional TCP flows, which are the most common. So, and that traffic pattern's changing all the time. So it definitely needs to be congestion control to get good RDMA, good rocky performance in a data center. And you definitely need some flexibility because this workload's changing all the time. Today, the challenge is, while the protocol is very well specced, the IBTA specs are very detailed, they have a lot of good information, and if you plug two NICs together in a back-to-back -back test, which is what happens in the interop testing, the protocol works fine, very well defined, very clear. What doesn't work uh, consistently across products is the congestion control, because while there is a CMP message, um, and there are some pieces of it, there's not, no protocol that's been defined that allows different NICs to work together. And that's sort of unusual. Typically in a, net, in a data center, you can mix and match NICs, you know, you can, and they'll work. You get pretty good performance. But what we're seeing is if you take a NIC from vendor A and a NIC from vendor B and you plug them in, as shown in the picture, we're seeing the algorithms work a little differently, and some algorithms might be more uh, aggressive and they get more bandwidth, and some might be more conservative. And it's not like either congestion control algorithm is like better, per se, because these workloads vary. And which congestion control is the right one is going to depend on your network configuration, what kind of traffic are you running. But for sure, you can't today deploy these two NICs in a, different NICs from different vendors in a one network and get good, fair, expected performance. So I, th I feel like that's fairly limiting. Um, that means that unless you're, you know, you have to use, you can't use the art deploy Rocky broadly in a network with a mixed bunch of vendors, which is, I think, pretty desirable. Which leads me to, I believe that standardization benefits the, the whole industry. I think Ethernet is just a great example of that. When you get a good standard and you can get multiple suppliers, then this protocol, this technology is going to grow. And, you know, it's been fundamental to e Ethernet. And some level of interop is really valuable. So that has to be balanced. You're going to want innovation. <laughs> As we've just heard from Idan and Oyelian, Len, that there's tons of advances every year. Lots of new ideas, so you definitely want flexibility. You need to be able to extend these algorithms. You need to be able to customize it would be ideal. So definitely the idea of a standard, and I don't think the idea of a standard does en end innovation. There's always proprietary extensions. People come up with their own ideas. It's gonna keep evolving. But I think getting one or two standards out there that would allow the non-expert <laughs> to deploy RDMA, take advantage of it, HPC, AM, AIML, ML is everywhere now. You know, uh, Walmart runs a big AI, ML. So, so you, if you want to be able to enable RDMA for a larger group of people, get more deployment, get more adoption of the protocol, then it'd be, well, it'd be to everybody's advantage to get at least one or two uh, congestion control algorithms standardized. Arvind. So I want to put this in a little bit of a perspective of AI systems. We talked about HPC AI application over the last two days. So what does the system actually looks like? So you have a backend network where it's just directly highly high bandwidth network just serving the RDMA network. We want a low jitter, low latency through that. And and the thing that is fronting these networks are all an RNIC where the, the RDMA is done, done in a, as a hardware offloader transport. Now the cluster is built as a homogeneous clusters, but here are a few things that varies. The cluster size varies, job size varies, they come and go uh, arbitrarily. The, the network topology that runs on these clusters, jobs, are also varying because it's highly dependent on the workload. As workloads come and go, the topology also changes. Now what, what this leads to is the following, and if it comes to the congestion control, we want the congestion control to be adaptable. It can't have one, one uh, thing that will just work across the board because of these constraints. Now, if we take this, if we uh, go to the next slide. Oh. Oh, sorry. So I want to now, 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 let's say from here onwards, what are we today? Where are the current trends, right? Uh, Idan just talked about like about uh, six different congestion controls, and very likely next year we'll come back and we'll be like two more added to that list, mm. right? So we have varying congestion controls, and and all, all more important is one side is not going to fit out because each of them is going to work for a specific workload. That's one. 
The second thing that Karen, you pointed out is two NICs don't talk to each other. So implementation varies across vendors. Well, as a deployment, if you have to take a deployment, we want diversity. Naturally, these are not going to work quite well. So when it comes to standardization, we want to keep innovation also into the picture. We want to allow the innovation because at in high performance, that's where the innovation actually happens. So where, where it comes down to is, can we take this uh, rocky uh, RDMA and come up with some kind of foundational pieces or primitives and start standardizing these pieces? Because likely these are, are going to be implemented in hardware and hardware is going to, going to be in the market for, or in the network for like few years. And right, so we have to be very diligent, pick those fundamental foundational pieces, start putting them into the picture. And I just listed a few here, and I'm sure there's a lot more than just these things, like a metadata content in a notification packet. Okay, format has to be standardized. We're not gonna be changing format along the way. Okay, then a set of reaction algorithms. Today we have six, maybe there's eight more comes up, but there are some things that are common with respect to the reaction algorithms. Let's try to standardize those pieces and put it in the, into the piece. Then if you start putting them, then we need to be able to provide an API to the user saying, okay, you choose what you want and uh, let, let that problem be with the deployment or the workload. Workloads can come and change the APIs. That's one thing. Now, the other thing that's also possible is, okay, can we talk about some congestion avoidance techniques altogether? Maybe it just complements all of this thing. Out of our delivery is one thing that is absolutely not at all talked about today. That's something that if you go after this, maybe it just solves, uh, uh, complements the whole thing. So, so I think these are the pieces where I feel we can start standardizing into this thing. Uh, and then we also leave flexibility for how you configure, how you set up these things, what are the parameters, maybe metadata itself. Uh, I mean, if, uh, where do we go? That's my view. Thanks, Arvind. So we've heard from designers, architects, engineers, vendors, creators of solutions, wrangling over this question of standardization, where it should exist, where it's a benefit. I'm gonna pretend for a moment that I'm an end user of this technology. I'm building a data center. I'm going to be leveraging thousands of compute nodes and I wanna deploy the best networking topology that I can fit for purpose. What I want is for all of the products in the marketplace to be perfect substitutes for one another so that I can pit multiple vendors against each other like we're in a coliseum in ancient Rome and let them fight to the death to the lowest price because I know that every single product is perfectly identical. I also want the best possible innovation that I can get from industry and I want each of them to be competing to deliver greater value to me. So I want those things at the same time. It's, is it, an, is, it, is it an impossible task? Yes, it's an impossible thing to achieve. So the question is, um, just to start this off, at what level and to what degree can we implement standardization? Think of it at the NIC level. Where can that live where I can have at least my cake and eat it too, to some degree or another. Um, eat on, oh, and, 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 if, and if what I'm asking for, if the answer is, look me in the eye, you know, you have a ridic you know, it's a ridiculous requirement. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts? So, <clears throat> so uh, from, I, I, I see the Rocky not, necessarily as a technology that must be integrated into a NIC, right? It's, it's a protocol. Um, and when you look at it from a perspective of a protocol, protocol can be implemented in so many different ways. Right? It can be implemented in software, in embedded firmware, in hardware. And all of these kind of, imp those are implementation options that, uh, that are sort of relevant uh, for uh, different kind of uh, workloads. Right. Um, so, um, f from that perspective, um, I, 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 I tend to compare it uh, to TCP, um, for example, where the TCP protocol defines uh, very well how to uh, how agents uh, of uh, TCP should interact with uh, congestion control. Um, 
Nevertheless, you can find the plurality of congestion control algorithms or bindings or ways to integrate it into your system, like, uh, for example, utilizing uh, different priorities and operating different uh, congestion control algorithms and different mechanisms to measure the network. And I think Rocky should be, Rocky should be competitive to that, right? And then, um, for me, it I think if I was a data center operator, uh, I, was, uh, I, I would wish to have this level of flexibility because this is where I bring value compared to my competitors, right? Um, and, and, uh, and, and from that perspective, uh, I don't necessarily see it as a problem of uh, interoperability of uh, network adapters, um, rather than how to create a data center level solution, right? Um, and I think that if you are a data center operator uh, and you look at it from this perspective, then what you would want is you would want the technology, if it's a software or hardware or somewhere in the middle, uh, to be aligned in the way you program it. So, so if you would program your uh, innovative uh, congestion control algorithm, which makes you better than whatever uh, data center you are competing with, then it would work on every NIC or software implementation or whatever existing in the market, right? And you would be able to develop more and more and the primitives would also develop in the industry. Um, um, and this way, um, this way the, the transport can evolve and the innovation of how to create a data center on top is evolving as well. It's going to be a bit awkward because Idan and I are going to share the mic. But Karen, based on what Idan just said, I mean, can, can we implement all of those things that I want above the hardware? Can the hardware just be essentially generic? And can the value that Idan is talking about live just at that hardware layer? And what are your thoughts on Idan's perspective? Well, I agree. Already made a protocol. And so, of course, you could implement it, you know, in a lot of different ways. Uh, in general, since the primary or the most common use of RDMA is to get really low bandwidth, really high performance, putting it in the NIC is pretty common and pretty, I believe, the best way to go, to hit those goals. So it's pretty common for it to be in the NIC. And I do think I really like the idea of primitives in the sense that there should be some, you want to provide people flexibility and you want to allow you know, a large data center, a Google, a Meta, to design their own congestion control algorithm. And if they want to, you know, compete and have a better solution because that's, you know, they've got really, you know, a ton of advanced software engineers and network engineers, I think that's really great. I also do think that there should be a standard that you could deploy RDMA without needing a hundred network engineers and software PhDs. It should be that the industry provides one or two, and TCP does, as you mentioned, Idan. The TCP has a congestion control that's integrated, there's options, they're all open, they're spec'd, and you can adopt them. You can write your own, and some people do. But a lot of companies, a lot of the smaller network uh, data centers, uh, enterprises, they, they don't write their own in general. <laughs> they use one or two of the, of the open standards. So I think, I think you can have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> okay, so let me play devil's advocate here and I'm gonna to toss this to you, Arvind, on this subject. Sure. Um, I'm pretending to be the customer here. And by the way, my requirements might just change completely from one moment to the next, so be prepared for that. Um, but in this case, I'm deploying 10,000 servers and we're going to be doing something that no one has ever done before because, and it's going to be the core of my company's go-to-market strategy. So it's brand new. So I'm going to have 100 PhDs probably working on this. Arvin, does that change the calculus from what, what, what Karen is mentioning in terms of how much I care about standardization? What do you think? Well, y yes and no. See, what I mean, Meta is kind of in that situation, right? I mean, you, you, you're, you're off doing this. You have a focus as opposed to, you know, we'll, we'll have Wei Len in here in a second from Cisco's perspective talking about all sorts of different folks. Yeah, so it's, so answer is yes and no. So we want to have entire diversity, that's one. So therefore things have to interoperate. But at the same time, when I deploy my stuff, I just want things to work. I don't want to sit and tune things. 
and I want my work, I want the transport to adapt to my workload, not the other way around. But it's, so it's, it's not that easy to do. I mean, this is just, this is where we want to go after. It's not something that where we are today because I have a choice of the algorithms to pick. I don't know which one to pick. Because again, uh, if I choose from one vendor to another, they don't work together. Even in the case of a DCQC, and there are like a flavors of DCQC that exist today. Yeah. Right? So now, I, I, so in some sense, the list that Iran went through, actually, if you kind of break it up, it's more than six, because if I start including variations out of it, right? So at, at least we have to standardize on those pieces that they, they have to pick. So therefore, when we start deploying these things, we don't have to sit and tweak. And these 100 PhDs that you're talking about, let them work on something else, not on, on this part, right? You know, there's, there's, there's a bigger, higher level problem to solve also. Yeah. So M that's where we are. M maybe you missed the part about me being adjunct faculty at Wharton. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I highly encourage any of you who, who don't have a PhD to pursue that. Also other forms of executive education, it's, a, it's, a, it's the best investment you'll ever make. It's my commercial. <laughs> Waylen. What, what, what do you think? Because you know, from a Cisco perspective, and, and, and I know you're not here representing Cisco to you know sell sell switches, but 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 you're dealing with folks who are at you know every end of the customer spectrum. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think the um, the operational simplicity definitely is. You want you want to give your give your mic up yeah. a little bit, just just a little bit. So there you go. Uh, operational simplicity definitely is uh, is a uh, uh, very very attractive, and you know it's. We, we still have perhaps PhDs that are available, but operational simplicity should be like a goal of how, uh, 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 an important goal for the solution that we come up with or, or the sta if, if it be a standard or, or any solution that gets deployed. Um, one, going back to one question I think you started out with is um, how, how, whether a, uh, you know, operational simplicity, uh, doing a standard, whether that actually, uh, you know, or, or, or having a fungible product that you, you mentioned where it's all, you know, you can go to any vendor. I think one, one area that, you, you know, it, you'd have to think about is there's, there's a innovation that goes and there's also uh, perhaps you can view it as a, a first leader's advantage where, uh, and, but, but that advantage is actually for the customer that the customer can have advantage in their networks to deploy something innovative and, and sort of uh, get ahead of the game. So I think perhaps there could be multiple phases where perhaps you can choose to normalize and, and, have, and go for a product that can be really interchangeable, but optionally over certain parts of the network uh, enable certain features with the expectation that other parts of the network will actually catch up. So I, I think it should be an evolutionary view rather than um, uh, that you'd be always looking at, uh, you know, products or, or, or networking gear that, whether it's on the on the server side, adapters, or or in the network on, on the switching side, that they'd all be pretty much the same. Uh, there's, uh, I, I think, different phases you can consider and and, and sort of pilot deployments, uh, and ultimately. Uh, everyone is going to catch up, and the, the purpose of innovation is for uh, improvement, uh, technology improvement across the board. It's not just you know for one one company, one business. It's 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 to benefit everybody. Thanks, and uh, Edan, you started out with sort of the first answer in this thread, and and your uh, uh, colleagues on the stage completely disagreed with what you said at first. It was super embarrassing. Just kidding. There's a lot of nuance here, uh, but do you have any, any follow up on thoughts? Um, I, so so yeah. So so again, I, like um, the complexity of uh, building a data center, in my view, is much broader than how to interoperate the congestion control of a transport line, right? Um, so, I, so I, I'm wondering, like, uh, may, maybe I'll in the, as a view of, uh, say you had a, a standardized congestion control, right, um, that is interoperable. Um, how, wh wh what, uh, what is the level of simplicity it would enable while building data center, right? Because, um, because uh, um, 
be, be, I, I am like I am mainly concerned about uh, concerned about uh, like once once you come up with um, like a, a standard, then uh, and people want uh, you know uh, some. Uh, like uh, different, uh, so, some other different approaches, and eventually you create like uh, ten different standards. This basically kills the whole process, right? Um, and the level of behaviors that you need to define in order to create a, a, a standardized condition control algorithms, like the, 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 the level of problems you may have, um, like uh, for example, uh, fairness, right? Which fairness can be related to the amount of uh, microseconds it takes you to respond on, uh, to, to react on, uh, on a congestion notification, or um, um, it, it, it can, be, can be severe, right? Um, and when, once, you, once you start deviating into your own data center choices, right, um, then, then it becomes, then, then, then it, it becomes the same challenge with a background algorithm uh, that is defined somewhere, which may, you know, tight certain people for certain implementations. It, it does, and that's the challenge with this high performance. Arvin, hold your stuff for a second. We 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 got a late start. Uh, the you know the the panel ahead of us or the session ahead of us kind of kind of bumped us forward. So if anyone does have a question, um, please. Let's uh, get you queued up. We're going to hear from Arvind here, and then we'll get to, we'll get to get to your question because we definitely want to include people's questions. Yeah. So I, what I was going to say is like a, it does create a challenge because at, in the case of a high performance where the innovation is going on, you are looking for a framework that the standardization provides, and within the framework, we'll have to start tweaking things. I don't think we can say okay that thou shall do only this and nothing else because that's that's not how things will work. And as you all find that out, that rolls into the next version of the standard. Okay, this is right. So we need to think about that way. I don't know if you can just say, okay, this is what it shall be and nothing else. That. Yeah, so, so if I understand you correctly, it's building this framework, and on top of it, yeah. there will be a lot of competition of like algorithms, capabilities, and the framework would evolve, and algorithms would evolve, and maybe something would catch up in the algorithmic part that would be that interoperable thing that is very easy to integrate, right? Exactly. Makes Qu sense. Uh, question or opinion or both? Go ahead. Uh, th thank you for the lively discussion. Uh, my question is for a little bit on the topic, Arvind, you talked about. You said you want adaptability from the algorithms, right? Uh, the way today we look at the algorithms, the congestion control, uh, it's an end-to-end conversation. Uh, congestion is not happening at the endpoints. It's happening somewhere in the middle. We take that information, bring it back to the sender, right, uh, or receiver, depends on the algorithm, and then we force a congestion control algorithm, right? Why not? Why not do the congestion control where it's happening, right? Instead of making it end-to-end, -end, and then it's application and load aware, why not leave it somewhere where the congestion is experienced and you take the remedial action there and then it's workload agnostic, it's fully adaptable. What do you think about that? Karen, do you want to take a stab? No? Or I, I Wayland, can, uh, or yeah. anyone, anyone? I can help. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Um, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, uh, so I, I, I would envision this as, a, you know, similar to traffic or something. Like, um, if, if the road is busy, you want you know, the car to stay in the parking lot because that's a place where um, it, that is associated with this car and is not damaging all others, right? So, so similarly, if you take a thought that is similar to that, right, you would think, um, so the, when, you, when you transmit something to the network, you transit, transmit it from a significantly large buffer, which is called like system memory, right? That's the place for this data, right? Um, and then um, the network adapters are transmitting it onto a network which has fairly small buffers, right? Um, and these buffers are, are sort of like this, this, uh, this, ternary buff uh, this temporary buffer to move in between servers, right? So you would want, like, the, the perfect congestion control algorithm would, um, like, uh, would remain this data in the memory 
until it is, uh, it is certain that this data would, tra tra would transfer through the network at, uh, at uh, the most uh, uh, lowest uh, latency and will not affect other, other workloads that want to use these buffers um, for moving, for example, to another node. See what I mean? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. Um, so that's, that, that's the challenge of congestion control. Thank you. I was just going to steal five for us. I was going to say we're not going to we're not going to catch us all the way back up, but we'll give you we'll, we'll take five. So that's perfect. So uh, yeah. So keep the, keep that in mind. We have uh, five or six minutes left, uh, sir. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the talk. So if we do achieve some standards and we want to verify interoperability or even self uh, proper behavior of just one device, we need test equipment probably. So what are test equipment vendors? doing properly or doing well right now to achieve this goal and what are new needs that you foresee in let's say you know high capability high precision high performance test gear like traffic generators and analyzers and visibility equipment is there any pressing need you see to make this dream be fulfilled I would say that today the test equipment um, there's some protocol testers but this level of interop is uh, is a bit trickier to do with that, and you'd be better off having a small cluster and a set of benchmarks that you can run to assure performance. And that's another initiative that Broadcom's trying to work with uh, the industry to get some better benchmarks around so that you can tell that the protocol not only works, but if you deploy, you'll get good um, congestion control performance as well. How would you? Um certify something, let's say, to a standard, a golden standard that's not based on what a vendor's producing? How would you have like some independent third-party verification? There is a UNH um, interop for RDMA, and I think that that body needs to expand some of the testing a little bit to, to show. Okay, thanks. Sure. Thank you. Yep. I actually take it. So there, are, there have been many talks actually today talking about congestion control one way or the other, right? Um, and all of them are capitalizing to a degree on having learnings from the network about what's happening, the state on links and so forth, fed back to the, to the endpoints that are senders that are very highly distributed and they are not uncoordinated, right? So they are really, I mean, they're getting the feedback from the network, but they're making their own minds when to transmit things. So I think if I look historically at, the, at this problem, congestion control, right, across history, I think there was mention of TCP. There have been mention of places where you're trying to contend on a shared resource to get through and how things calibrate themselves. Often you, you, you try to get increased throughput, but you, can, you cannot meet everything. Like to have, to have a stable throughput, if you want to put it that way, or a stable system, to achieve low latency and so forth, right? So people have resorted to mechanisms to have centralized schedulers and centralized ways of reserving bandwidth or lanes across the network to guarantee what you want. So the question in here, how, how do you fit in that spectrum? That's what I'm confused about a little bit, to tell you the truth. That where do you see that going? Do you think it's achievable to have very kind of uncoordinated, if you will, uh, congestion control mechanism or actually feedback to senders to try to avoid congestion or try to work around congestion or somehow dynamically route in a distributed way or control the, the transmission of, uh, of traffic in highly coordinated, kind of uh, highly uncoordinated distributed way? And can we really solve that problem that way? Or do you have to resolve back to, to kind of centralized schedulers, if you want to put it that way, to try to, to do things, to achieve this, that objective that you're looking for? I think you could look at Don's list of different algorithms to know that you're not going to get good consensus on that. <laughs> Some people are going to think centralized, but there are quite a few different algorithms that are showing pretty good performance. There's some receiver-based work that's been done that uh, you know, has some promise for be providing good, uh, good performance without a centralized scheduler. Centralized schedulers have their own challenge. Sure. So. Because reaction time becomes also another issue. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's the other thing. Right? And scale. They don't, you know, limited scale. 
any other thoughts? Um, just to add, <coughs> add to that. Two, two minute warning. So just, want just want to add call? one more thing. It's also a function of, uh, to add to what Karen said, it's also a function of what type of workload you do. Workloads may have their own inherent synchronization that's going, going on. Sure. And if that happens, you may want to just that reuse it. That could be the case, but right? you have hybrid workloads as well. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about, I could, I could get, avoid congestion and go to the other mic, but I'm congested at two <laughs> questions. So. Also, there is, so, so there is work on theorem of what kind of, uh, so I, I uh, call all of these congestion control uh, reactive algorithms because they react for notifications happening in the network and there is a theorem um, also uh, published in CCOM about what is the limit of this, um, like uh, according to the amount of flows, like what is the uh, amount, what is the size of the buffer that you pay because your uncertainty between the transmitter and the where the congestion is. And it's, there is a theorem that shows that it's like a square root of n. Um, and there are active researchers working on trying to understand how to improve this square root of n and uh, we look at theories like uh, at, at, at practical capabilities in the network like uh, precision time uh, PTP, um, precision time protocol to, uh, to, to have a better view of what's happening in the network, more precise time measurements. Um, and, and also there is a lot of work on creating proactive congestion control algorithm which are basically scheduling traffic through either a central entity, through uh, switches that interact with the network adapters. Uh, so uh, this is a work that is trying to disrupt this limit. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Thanks for your patience. Brevity is the soul of wit. Ready, set, go. Sorry, uh, I'll try to be. Um, um, Concise. Um, so the question is, um, you know, there's a lot of work happening in this area, um, but uh, standardization requires like understanding of the problem. Um, you know, uh, essentially whether you know a, a common solution can apply to everything or not. Um, um, you know, so so in that sense, do we understand um, all the workloads that we are trying to solve enough, and do we know if they can like fit into uh, some buckets that we can actually try and attack. Uh, because in in our experience, like oper operating large networks, definitely I think we found that, for example, for warehouse style uh, AI networks, interoperability is not that important. Or, um, you know, flow control is good enough. Like we don't need condition control for a certain set of like workloads or something like that, yeah. Who has the yeah. most concise answer? Yeah. Wayland, bring us home. So. Uh, generally, your, your points actually, I actually am in a lot of agreement. And my slides actually talked about it. Um, the There could potentially be application profiles for specific workloads and that limit its use uh, and applicability, but that, that may be very tailored for uh, certain workloads that you mentioned. So those are definitely uh, things that could uh, happen for even within the standard. I mean, there, there are always profiles and so forth. So it, it doesn't deviate from what the, uh, the, the interest is, uh, but I completely agree with you. Uh, the challenge of getting all of the different requirements, trying to get agreement, that would, that's actually not, won't be easy. Completely agree with you there. Yeah. Thanks to everyone. Thanks for your participation. Call to action. The net of it is OCP can help encourage that work to continue within networking groups. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks to the panel.